Hi, I'm Benedict Hobson, Chief Content Officer at Dezine. Uh, and today I'm broadcasting live from the Dezine studio space in London. Uh, Dezine has teamed up with bathroom design brand Cola uh, for a panel discussion today, um, all about enhancing luxury and well-being uh, through digital innovation. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined by an expert panel, um, which includes uh, Paul Wistey, uh, who's Vice President of Design and Construction in the uh, Asia Pacific region, uh, region at Four Seasons uh, Hotels. Uh, hi, Paul. Hi, great to see you. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Christina Zanich, who is uh, CEO of Christina Zanich Consultants. Uh, hey, Christina. Hi there. Hi, nice to see everyone or meet everyone. Um, uh, and uh, we're also joined by uh, Lunchek Tan, uh, who is Vice President of Industrial Design um, at Cola. Uh, hi, Lunchek. Hello, nice to see everyone. Um, good to see you all. Thanks for, um, for joining us. Um, if you could just um, for, take a few minutes just to introduce yourselves a little bit more detail, uh, maybe starting with you, Paul. Um, tell us um, who you are and, and, and what you do. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, well, as, as you mentioned, I'm Vice President of Design and Construction for Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, so I'm based here in Asia Pacific. I am responsible for the overall construction and design portfolio uh, within the region, uh, working closely with my partners in design and innovation and food and beverage and operations, but it comes through us. Um, I originally am a art trained architect. I studied in, from Canada, but I studied in Brazil and Korea. And I have uh, worked in about, I think, eight different countries in the world, and I'm registered architect in the United Kingdom. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, and Christina. Yeah, hi, I'm Christina Zanik, and um, I run an interior design studio here in uh, Dubai. But we also have offices in uh, Bangkok, Riyadh, and now opening up in the Philippines. So most of our work is focused on luxury hotel hospitality design. Um, around the region and around the world. So we're starting to do a lot of different projects everywhere. So yeah, it's uh, kind of an exciting uh, moment for us. Great, thank you, Christina and uh, Lunchik. Hello, uh, my name is Lunchik Tan. I'm the Vice President of Industrial Design for Kola Kitchen and Bath. I'm responsible for design studios across um, China, India and North America. Um, pretty much responsible for all products across Kohler's Kitchen and Bath from toilets to faucets to fixtures and furniture. Um, and uh, been with Kohler for almost 10 years now. So yeah, happy to be here. Great. Yeah, good to, good to have you with us. Um, okay, great. So the, the format of the discussion um, today um, is uh, each of our panelists will um, spend a few minutes just presenting their work around the topic um, and then we will uh, have a conversation um, around that. Um, Paul, I'll go back to you if you can uh, load up your slides and uh, I'll, I'll hand over hand over to you. Thanks, Ben. Um, I thought with this pro with this uh, presentation, I would share one of our newer projects that has been opened over the pandemic because we haven't been able to travel so much. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the idea of um, being in an urban situation, but also being in a resort. So this is our property in, in uh, Bangkok. This is the entry to our Bangkok property. It's an urban resort. I originally started on this project 12 years ago, uh, took a hiatus for a number of years and it was wonderful to come back and, and see it open. So this was an architecture by, um, Hamilton's out of, out of Kuala Lumpur, and the interiors are by Jean-Michel Gethy of uh, Deniston. So this is our entry. You can see, again, it's, we're trying to um, try to play against the idea of, of a typical urban condition. This is right on the Chao Phraya River and um, really trying to bring in, in the river into the, into the project and to um, just give us that kind of overall feel. Um, Inside, as you walk through, the, the river is, the water and river is, is part of the uh, discussion. So the, we've got the, the elephants and we've got this large triple height space that, that brings in these, this sense of, of calm and peace and, and tranquility, but as well within the, the metropolis of Bangkok. So there's this wonderful contrast between old and new and you know, plugging in and plugging out that, that I think is quite dynamic within the project itself. Um, really, really delicately done by Jean-Michel. Um, we're really quite proud of him. 
You can see here, this is the looking back into the entry courtyard. Um, again, trying to bring that idea of water through. So we, I know that this isn't sort of so much on technology, but I just really wanted to share because I'm super excited about it. Um, and I think that it, it kind of has that contrast between plugging in and plugging out of the world and giving you that opportunity and using design as a, as a mechanism to you know, be in a very urban situation and being able to, you know, stay as a business guest, but also have that idea of wellness and being able to decide and, and choose how far you go in and out um, within that within that environment. I had to show a picture of the bar. I was there a couple of nights ago. Um, it's a great place to be. And um, again, this kind of contrast, you would typically think that this type of design is associated with, um, with some with a resort if i said this was in Costa Mui, we'd all be thinking yeah it's totally normal but the idea of the lush tropics that that come into the space i think um really make it quite sing uh it's you know it's this kind of i love this because it feels to me like you know you get this perfect blend here of, of this this metropolitan uh you know situation setting and this idea of being able to just plug out and um being able to really enjoy that space as an urban resort and really immerse yourself within the city, but also being able to have that decompression space that I, th I think we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, next up, I wanted to show a project that we're going to be, we just announced recently. Um, it's going to open in about five years. Uh, this is in Melbourne. It's uh, our new Melbourne project with, that's designed by Cox Architects and uh, it will have um, a hotel and, res and, and uh, residences in each tower, hotel residence each tower. And um, we're looking at doing this as is a very, very sustainable development. And, uh, and within Four Seasons, one of the things that we're, we're really focusing on right now is sustainability in our portfolio moving forward. And we're very excited about some of the innovation that is going to come through in this project and, and, and just being part of that, um, that change. And then finally, uh, this is Osaka. It's opening in a couple of years. Uh, Niken Sike did the architecture for this. A um, couple hundred keys. It's it's just one of those, again, one of those places where hyper urban environment, but we're looking at all those touches of wellness and, and just really that idea of escape and that idea of just coming in from that that compression and being able to decompress in such a in such a hyper city. So it's a couple of projects that I wanted to share with you. Um, and I'll pass them back over to you now. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. And you, we can probably touch on this in the conversation um, later, but you kind of talked about the, the, the concept of kind of plugging in and, and plugging out there. And um, obviously we're here talking about kind of technology and digital advances. Yeah. And I think we're, we know we're plugged into technology a lot of the time. And I think um, quite a lot of people think, you know, actually when I want to get away, when I want to go on holiday, when I want to have a break, I want to actually kind of disconnect. Uh, how do yeah. you see the kind of role of technology in terms, in, in that sense, um, thinking of um, these kind of luxury wellness spaces as being places where often people kind of want to get away from technology, if, if anything? Yeah, I think that there is that. I mean, technology has been developed to make our life, to improve our lives, right? And to make our lives more efficient and to make, give us all these extra opportunities. And I really do believe that when we talk about technology and design, we also have to talk about technology outside of it and, and unplugging from that. Um, whenever I talk about luxury design or design in general, I always say that you need to get time, space, and experience. It's those three ingredients that make, that make what we do so special. And when you talk about digital environment and you talk about plugging in and plugging out, time becomes really critical. Um, and how you perceive time, I mean, the way that time changes in a resort when you, when you arrive to compare when you arrive into a, a very urban situation and, and the mindset that you have. So I think that looking at those, those principles and applying that to technology, we need to recognize that as important as technology is, we need to be the ones that are in control of technology. And there's that luxury of time and experience that you have when you turn off your phone and you sit with the people that you love and you talk to them or you throw them in the pool or you even just have, read a book next to them. And, and that to me is a luxury that um, a lot of us deny ourselves. And that's something that we need to look as designers. I'm sure Christine will talk about that in her work you know, and finding those, those spaces, those moments that we can create that, 
that make us want to put our phones down, that make us want to shut the laptops and just share that experience with the people that we love. Great. Thank you, Paul. Well, um, you've kind of teed up Christina there, so I'll, uh, I'll hand over to, to her. Uh, you're up now, Christina, if you could share your okay. presentation with us and, and talk us through your slides. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. So um, just, you know, in terms of interior design, we work with uh, many of the brands um, more on their luxury level and always sort of trying to come up with some new ideas. Uh, but each of the brands we work with, whether it's depending on the operator, they all have their own look and feel and uh, sort of trying to imagine that now in today's uh, needs, you know, it's kind of interesting. And whether it's an urban setting or whether it's also um, something uh, as a resort, you know, we're always having to look at different things and different ways of doing the design. So it's just kind of interesting. Uh, I just have a few projects here. This was a um, project, it was a refurbishment and a deflagging of, um, of a hotel. And this has become the Ritz Carlton in Al Wadi in the desert resort. And it's kind of a beautiful uh, location set amongst all these um, sand dunes and so forth. And we really wanted to bring in that sort of Arabic experience in here and also moving away from digitalization, but also having enough digitalization, you know, within this sort of desert retreat. So this was uh, one of the entry areas. Uh, this was one of the villas. Um, the villa's really nice, really also creating spaces where people can relax, you know, utilize every sort of inch of the space um, and sort of rejuvenate basically. Uh, we're working on a couple of other interesting projects. Um, I love uh, the idea of designing a, uh, a lodge, you know, always have. And this was our uh, lodge uh, for the JW Marriott, and it's in the Masai Mara. Again, you know, sort of really bringing nature into the spaces, looking at sort of sustainable design, um, as well as materials, looking at what can be done locally. So this is one of the tents that um, we're designing at the moment. Um, a few other projects. Um, this is the St. Regis in Riyadh, a lot more modern design. Here we're really sort of opening up the spaces a lot more, really creating that luxury of space and um, really sort of keeping materiality very simple um, and very sort of understated in a way. Um, so yeah, these are some other things that we're working on, keeping it modern. And I think a lot of these particular brands that we'd been working with all had this sort of stereotype. And it's really nice to see that uh, we can actually explore and go a little bit more contemporary within the approach. Um, this was a project we finished, but we started this about five years ago and it's just uh, completed. And this particular uh, space was a presidential suite. The client wanted super luxury. You know, um, what that was for us was really opening up places like the bathroom to have, you know, views of the exterior uh, as much as possible. And this particular um, space had a gym, had a barber, had a spa you know, as, as well as other facilities and really sort of bringing in that wellness in terms of uh, that urban setting. Uh, we're currently working on uh, maybe four or five uh, resort projects and which is kind of, uh, which has been really nice uh, working on a different way of sort of expressing luxury, um, more on that barefoot luxury as everyone sort of mentions and talks about these days. And it's really looking at how we can create something more from a nature experience, creating narratives that really work on that wellness um, sort of um, approach. So this is actually a project we're working. It's about to be finished. It's in Hergada in Egypt. It's on an island called Tawila. This is just one of the bathroom designs. Um, other things we, you know, we worked on various offices for uh, companies like Accor. This was their um, headquarters. Again, they wanted us to represent one of their brands in their office space. We never do offices, but actually it was a much more of a luxury approach. So this was uh, what we had done for them. Again, uh, we don't limit uh, ourselves. Um, our primary work is hospitality design, but every now and then we get some wild project and it might be some private villa for someone. Um, and this particular project here uh, was on a, the Bulgari Island and the client really wanted to sort of do, you know, 
design everything around water and seahorses and so forth. And it's kind of interesting uh, what we had done for this particular project. So this is just one of the images. And lastly, you know, the epitome, if you'd call it luxury, you know, having um, beautiful fish tanks in the middle of your private dining, you know, and all sorts of things. So something we had done a long time ago, but uh, I wanted to include that as a, you know, what, you know, over excess maybe in some, some forms, uh, but very different to what we are designing at the moment. So, yeah, so these are just a few of the projects that we've done. And uh, yeah, it's been a kind of a nice journey to work with different operators and to really see what direction they're going into with their various brands. Great. Thank you, Christina. Um, and just to touch on what you were kind of hinting at um, at the end there or kind of throughout your presentation, the idea of luxury and, and what luxury means and, and, and how, how it's changing. Um, I mean, you do a lot of work in, in the Middle East, which I suppose is kind of associated with a kind of particular type of kind of maybe flashy, grandiose, um, opulent kind of luxury. I mean, yeah. I, I, have, I haven't had a chance to, to get over there since since COVID, but when I was last there, what people were saying to me was, oh, that's changing now. It's, it's all mm. about the experience, um, maybe the barefoot luxury kind of thing that you mentioned. Um, do you think that's, that's happening? Have you noticed um, over the course of the last five, 10 years that, that um, the kind of what people want from their luxury experiences is, is changing significantly? Absolutely. Um, I would say more and more uh, clients, if it's a private client, for instance, they're really going into much more very um, uh, sort of simple design, if I can call it that, although it's not simple, maybe it's still expensive to um, manufacture or make, but definitely design is becoming simpler. The use of gold as, you know, that opulent <laughs> sort of colour, I think uh, less and less, you know, I don't think any of our clients now are looking at that as, you know, a status of luxury, you know, or opulence. So it's very rare that we actually experience anything like that with some of the clients we're working with. From a hospitality point of view, you know, again, I think the luxury of space and what Paul had mentioned uh, before as well, you know, it's, it's how you experience those spaces. So we're looking more and more about experiencing uh, space um, creating narratives, uh, local settings, you know, and how we can really play on that to create something new. So people are looking for something different. I think, you know, the opulence has uh, sort of somehow not diminished. I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's not here at all, but definitely on our projects, we're seeing a, um, a different shift. So fewer of the uh, floor to ceiling fish tanks, uh, aquariums then. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of, yes, exactly. But, um, you know, I mean, it's kind of nice bringing those sort of elements in. You know, we talk about biophilic design and bringing in planting, but it's kind of nice to bring in some of that, you know, underwater world, you know, maybe not like it used to be, but maybe in a different sense. So, yeah, it's nice. Great. Thank you very much, Christina. Um, okay, uh, Lunchek, um, over to you. All right, <clears throat> and let me share my slides. Just give me a sec. You see, oops, I've kind of jumped to the, back. okay. You see my slides? Great. Yeah, yes. okay. So um, I, so I thought about, you know, what to share, you know, uh, around the whole topic of, you know, combining technology and, and luxury. Um, and, um, and I wanted to share, you know, or provide some insights to how, you know, us as a design team approach um, our product designs. Uh, when we think about luxury, I mean, and, and at the end of the day, fundamentally, um, you know, we, we always think about the user experience. <clears throat> and, and when we think about luxury, you know, we always ask ourselves, you know, how do we elevate the user experience? And, and you, you can never run away from, you know, trying to make the bathroom easier to use, use uh, make our products safer and more delightful, right? And, and there should always be an uh, element of surprise, uh, you know, when our user interact with our products. Um, and 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 we also, I mean, the, the, the second part, you know, it's we think about too is, you know, how do we create an experience that takes our user away from their daily routine, 
So that element of surprise, it's, it's important as well. So, and, and I think technology enables us to do that. Um, and, you know, and, and we, we think about technology and or we implement technology, not because we can, uh, but, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, it enables uh, the bathroom space to be safer, you know, and easier and, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, more delightful. So I'm going to talk about a few, uh, use a few uh, projects that we have done to kind of illustrate some of these points and give some examples of you know what uh, uh, you know how how we define luxury. So um, we're very proud to have launched uh, our new showering collection, uh, which we call Statement and Anthem. Um, it's you know it's a it's a big uh, range of of collection uh, fixtures and showers you know which delivers um, you know really nice. Um, um, water sprays um, and which we embed, you know, water technology where, you know, we infuse air into our water. So, you know, you get, you get a, a really nice uh, sense of, of, of um, feel when the water touches your body. Um, it saves water because, you know, every droplet of water has, you know, 70% of every droplet of water uh, is infused with air. Um, but, you know, when, when, when it touches your body, you know, the, the water spreads across your body in, in a more even way. So you get the warmth of the water around your body. But, you know, where technology is concerned, you know, we, we, you know, we have you know, the, the Anthem valve, uh, our digital valve, which enables our user to actually operate a shower in a much more intuitive way. Um, today, you know, if you go to traditional showers, um, you know, there's a lot of twisting, turning and adjusting. Uh, and, you know, and uh, there's quite a bit of guesswork as to how you operate that, especially in the hotel space when you're faced with a, a, a showering fixtures for the first time. So I have to admit, it's not as intuitive as it should be. Um, uh, however, with the Anthem Valve, you know, we, we've made a user interface which is contextual aware. So, you know, uh, when you walk into the valve, it, when you walk into the, the, the showering space, all you see is an on-off button. And only after you turn the on off button do you see, you know, the, the kind of showering that you want to select. And when you select it, then you turn on the temperature. Or you have the option of turning on your, your shower because it's connected uh, uh, via Wi-Fi. Uh, you can turn on your showering outside of the showering space. And that's really where, you know, the safety bit come in because, you know, of the cold shock. You know, often when you stand under a shower, you turn it on, it's too cold and you, you jump back and there's safety issues there. Um, and also we want to create, you know, something that, you know, you, you can turn it on only when the temperature is ready, it blinks, it lets you know temperature is there, you walk in, right? So there's no, there's no, uh, the shock effect. Um, the other product that uh, we, we've spent a lot of time working on is the stillness uh, freestanding bath. And this is one of those, projects that we look at, you know, the bathing experience where we want to detach and, and allow the user to escape from, from their daily routine. Um, it's, a, it's a bath that the water runs across the edge and over the edge and around the bathtub. Um, so you can sit in your tub. It's, it's, it's a huge tub, actually. So you can sit in there and enjoy that water flow, hear that water flow, and it helps you de-stress and helps you get away from, from you know, your, the, the, the everyday stress and forget about your stress uh, when you're taking the bath. And then next, uh, I'm sorry. So, so we also have an experienced tower that, that it's packed with this uh, bathtub. And that ex experienced tower actually dispenses fog. Um, so again, you know, helping you to, to, to kind of imagine yourself in, you know, amongst clouds, you know, and, and away from, from your everyday life, there is a scent a capsule that you can, you can put, pour, you know, uh, essential oils into. So, you know, you get that smell as well, uh, depending on which kind of smell you like you, you, as, as you choose, just pour the oil into, into the capsule and you will dispense the scent. So, so there is that aspect of, you know, designing a multi-sensorial experience, right? So, so to, you know, to again, let, bring you to a different place, the place where you want, want to go. Um, and then, you know, once in a while, we, we challenge ourselves, you know, where we marry technology into a very traditional product. Um, we've got 
you know, we've got the, a, a portfolio of intelligent toilets. And uh, with this project, which we call Numi2, it's an intelligent toilet that challenges and all that, that redefines the, the toileting experience where you know we introduce lights so and and sound so so you know again when you are sitting there for 15 to 20 minutes again you have the option of you know breaking that routine uh, having a very different experience every time you're sitting uh, on the toilet and takes you away from your daily routine um, and with technology uh, this is where we also you know challenge ourselves and look at you know how would we help the user um, um, experience the toileting experience different every other time. Um, and technology allows, you know, so when we look at technology, there is uh, um, the, the ability or the, for us or the opportunity for us to make uh, intelligent toilets smarter, to use technology to, through machine learning, uh, to make our, uh, uh, the experience to elevate that experience. So, you know, from a lighting perspective, you know, we've included um, lightings where, you know, it, it tracks the time of the day. So it's, you know, it changes temperature over time. So in, when during the day, it's brighter, but at night it's, it's darker. Uh, and, and that it's done through machine learning. So it doesn't break uh, our users' uh, circadian rhythm. And there is sound in there as well. Yes, you can choose any sound, uh, any music you want. You can play your favorite uh, uh, playlist, but there are embedded soundtracks in there to help you relax. And it um, it's tracks the time of the day as well. So, you know, for example, we have a, a, a soundtrack in there that is uh, um, based around uh, a, a theme at the, in the ocean um, where you hear seagulls in the day occasionally and you hear whales humming uh, at night right so again you know we've done a lot of research and, and, and understood that you know when you hear sounds of nature right it helps you relax and it calms you down so you know i think technology gives us that opportunity to elevate that experience and bring a little bit of delight and surprise to our customer right so i think that's kind of a you know, a, a, a high level overview of what we do and when we think about technology and, you know, the things that we do in Cola. Great. Thank you very much, Anjik. Um, oh, and you, you talked about the idea of kind of creating delight and, um, and, and surprise, I guess, especially when you're thinking of, about the, the bathroom, uh, there's definitely such a thing as, you know, too surprising. <laughs> How do you kind of walk that line between um, creating those moments, those unexpected moments, um, while making sure that, um, like you were saying, that things are intuitive, that people are, are, are feel comfortable in, in the space. Because yeah. I guess the, the, the issue with technology is as amazing as it can be, it, it can be kind of alienating sometimes. How, how, as a designer, how, how do you kind of bridge those, those things? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. We, we, we've, we've learned, we've, we've gone through many uh, difficult lessons uh, uh, through all the projects that we've done. And it's always tempting uh, for us to uh, incorporate or apply too much technology because the technology is there, right? And it's tempting because, you know, uh, you know every, everybody, when we think about technology, we want to add in more. We love the bling, you know, we, we, we love adding in more sensors because we can. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's always harder, in my opinion, to design something simple, clever, intuitive than it is to overcomplicate. Um, and therefore, you know, we, 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 have, we put in a lot of rigor around consumer testing. So, you know, we build prototypes of the prototypes, you know, put them in bathrooms and get users to test it. Right? And, and, you know, it's through this user testings that we typically, when we do that, we, re we realize in our, in our process that we tend to take things out because user doesn't, you know, it, it, and it's difficult for, for, for users to, to understand what we're trying to do. So simplify, simplifying technology, it's actually harder to do than, than, than we think most of the time, right? And, and it's important that, you know, you, you keep things simple, keep things easy. But with, um, with automation, with machine learning, it helps as well, right? You know, it's the example I use about, you know, a, a circadian rhythm, right? It's, it's something that the machine will do it for you. We automate it so the user doesn't have to deal with it. 
right? So uh, um, you know they, they they have to they have to adjust or or, or turn or, or or learn how to do it, right? The machine just does it for you, right? So so and when it comes to things like that, you know that the we as designers have to have a point of view and to to decide what's best for the user, right? And and kind of put the the, the best foot forward and make sure that you know the technology is applied right. Mm. And and when you're um, um, developing these 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 projects, um, where does the initiative come from or, or the impetus to to um, kind of add technology to these to these products? Is is there kind of consumer demand or is there like demand for, from the hospitality industry? You mentioned that you know the, the temptation is because the technology is there, let's let's add it. Um, but are you seeing um, like a, a, a big demand for these kind of technologically advanced um, bathroom products in, in yes, the market? I- Yes, I, I believe so. I think, well, the thing is, when you look at consumer behaviors uh, in, 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 in how consumers deal with products in their everyday life, there is that shift, that change where consumers, there are, there are things that the consumer expects today for products to do for them, right? Just use cars i use the car example because you know it's everybody understands it everybody drives you know um, and and car is one of those in, in the car industry you know they've been looking into gesture control you know uh, artificial intelligence you know sensors everywhere outside the car and inside the car they've been dabbling in that for years right and today you know you you would expect to you know get away from your car walk away and the car locks itself and that is an expectation today of cars Right. So, and then with coffee machines as well, you know, there's plenty of things that's automated in coffee ma- machines. Um, so, you know, everyday appliances, you know, objects, and, and there is that level of, of expectation already. So, so we study all of that. We study uh, 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 user behaviors uh, uh, and, and we tend to want to follow what is norm and, and what consumers are used to when we apply our technology. We don't want to go into something that you know, that is, that is difficult to learn, that it's not intuitive as in, you know, they don't understand it, they don't know what it's doing, you know, but it's, it needs to be something that, you know, they, they, they understand it straight away it, because they deal with it every day, right? Mm. Um, yeah, so, and, and that's where, that where the, we need to find that balance, right? So, so understanding, observing users, you know, understand how they live their everyday life is important. Yeah. Uh, and, and Paul and Christina, from, from your point of view, from um, coming at it, this from a kind of um, kind of design of hospitality experiences, uh, how, how do you feel about um, technology? Is it something that um, that you are finding that clients are requesting more and more? Uh, is it something that you're suggesting to clients to say that they, they need to do? Um, how do you um, kind of approach the the kind of increasing amounts of technology that that you you get in in, in your projects and, and and how it's useful and what the benefits are to to the client and, and to the end consumer? Paul, I'll, I'll ask you first. All right, I, I think that you know we we have to look at it from a very uh, pragmatic point of view. So. I sometimes joke that we need to be one generation behind in technology so that everyone understands it. Because as you know, Lunchek said, you, you can't go in there and expect to, to be able to, to operate all these things. And sometimes I'll compare it like going over to your house, Ben, you know, if you gave me the remote controls to your television, I wouldn't know how to get Sky Sports or something. I wouldn't be able to figure it out. It's that kind of thing where there's a big difference between domestic and, and hospitality in terms of luxury design. And so when we come in from a, from a hotelier's point of view, um, we're looking at that side of the guest interface, but we're also trying to look at ways that we can marry technology with the human experience. So the ways that, that we can use technology to enable ourselves to give our guests a better experience within the resort and, and just make them feel more at home, make them feel more comfortable. So it's this balance between using in, more innovative technology, maybe in the back of house, uh, within our systems, but in the front of house, using the technology to be able to enhance that human interaction that we have at, at, between our guests and our colleagues. And um, I mean, hospitality is, is, is quite a, it's a fast moving um, space. There's a lot of kind of, um, you know, one-upmanship for one for a better word, you know, that kind of constantly being competitive. 
Um, do you feel that like technology has an important role to, to play in that in, in terms of offering something new that a, a rival hotel or hotel brand can't offer its, its, its customers? Think of it as of an example of that. Like I, I mean, I can't think of a of a time when when I've heard of another brand using technology as their way to exclusively deliver any type of experience, if it's luxury hotel or or not. I mean, you 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 get the you know capsule hotels you hear about from time to time where you don't see a human being. But in terms of the what we're doing with boots on the ground and delivering you know luxury hotel projects. I always see the technology as, as a way of enhancing the, the interaction between the guest and the, the call and our colleagues, or even just creating that extra piece of time and experience and space for, for our guests to be able to relax and to unwind, whether it's in, a, in an urban situation or if it's in a resort situation. So the technologies, I think much similar to the way that technology needs to change between um, residential, luxury residential and luxury hospitality, I think it's the same way between the back of house and the front of house with when we design. Yeah. Uh, and Christina, what about from, from your point of view? Um, you, you're not a kind of hotelier yourself, but you, you work for, uh, for hotels. What do you think the kind of mood is among your clients? Well, I think when you're working with a lot of different brands, you know, different brands require different sort of design approaches. So, you know, when I have a look at some of the, the new Cola products there and I'm thinking, OK, you know, I particularly wouldn't want to be sitting in a toilet uh, room for a long time. But there are a lot of people who might like that experience and so forth. So maybe there are a little bit more lifestyle brands where that type of uh, product is um Right. But then when you're working on a very luxury type of hotel um, and it's a resort, I mean, that's the last thing that you want. So for us, I mean, we're always looking to try and maybe uh, put the technology um, in the background, making it look a little more seamless. We don't really want to see it, but we want it to work. Um, so I think from our point of view, we always like to sort of hide it, you know, if we can, whatever the technology is, but it's actually working and makes that whole guest experience still kind of intuitive and, you know, people are kind of happy to have it. But, you know, I think when uh, designing a resort, you know, I'm all for the digital detox, you know, um, mm -hmm. I like to put things away. I don't really particularly uh, like the idea of having to carry my phone around all the time. And I just experienced that recently where, um, you know, I went to the front desk and I just said, look, I didn't receive this or it was something they were supposed to give me. And they said, well, we sent you a WhatsApp. And I was thinking to myself, well, I left my phone in my handbag. You know, I didn't really want to carry it with me. So, you know, there are certain things like that where di the digitalization is, uh, is great. But, you know, I particularly at this resort didn't really want to carry my phone. So I kind of like uh, digital things very seamless. But we've been working with digital products for a long time. You know, things like... Um, you know, mirrors and uh, smart glass and all this type of thing, you know, it's been there and we're still using these things and people love it for different reasons. You know, privacy, it's a, it's a great product to have there. And, you know, even some of the cola products, you know, I love the idea, you know, there was always that, um, you know, the same singing in the shower and they're actually allowing us to sing in the shower now. And, you know, we can all be musicians and singers. And, and I think that's kind of nice. So that's kind of a luxury where you can express yourself and, um, you know, be who you want to be while you're on holiday. So I kind of see some of those products really kind of uh, nice and something that I would like to specify and, you know, do be who you want to be when you're away, when you can't do that, when you're in your home or going to work and things like that. So, so yeah, there's just some of my thoughts on that. Great. Um, and Lunchik, um, uh, Christina was talking about, you know, that kind of digital detox idea. I'm kind of curious about when we're thinking about um, maybe resorts and the idea of well-being um, how maybe because I think maybe it's, it's a kind of lazy but I think we often think of as, as I was saying at the start you know uh, you want to kind of get away from technology I'm kind of curious about how um, digital technology can help actually facilitate or even enhance those those kind of experiences um, working at Cola and working on on, on, on these kind of project products um, how do you see what are the opportunities here with digital technology to actually um, kind of enhance these spaces from a kind of well-being perspective because I think well-being is, is is something that I think 
you know, our well-being probably suffers quite a lot because of our exposure to all this digital technology in, in one way or another. So I'm kind of curious about how we can kind of flip that uh, and use the technology to actually um, create spaces which can kind of heal and can um, give us um, rest and revitalize us. Oh, well, yeah. So, you know, um, you know, I like I like what Christina said about, you know, where technology is hidden away. And, you know, and most times we like to approach technology that way. You know, and it makes me think about, you know, the time when, when I was in Bali and staying in a hotel, I was walking around the garden with my wife. And, you know, you hear, you know, and in, and in Bali, right? And, and, you know, you hear croaks, uh, uh, frogs croak, croaking in, in a distance, you know, water droplet in a distance. And, and it's so nice walking down uh, that garden until I realized it was actually packed through speakers hidden in trees. <laughs> So, uh, you know, but, you know, but they would hit it well, it would have given me a very nice experience because I was loving it, you know, it's like, it's so nice. And then that, that's kind of really embodies what Bali is, right? That all that sound of nature. Um, um, and, and I guess, you know, they didn't good, they do a good job hiding those speakers, but, you know, if they did it better, it would be great. So I think that's where, you know, that example of how technology could bring that sense of well-being, you know, if we apply technology well and then we're, we're smarter about it, right? And, and again, you know, not applying technology because we can, uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. applying it in a very meaningful way, um, 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 I think it, it, it does elevate uh, uh, experiences and, and the notion of wellness. And, and when it comes to, you know, wellness, you know, we look at wellness and wellness is a broad word and you know, it covers and embodies many, many different aspects. Um, but we do like to see it being about self, it's inside out, um, um, you know, and, and, and focusing on the user is key. Um, you know, and, and when you um, wake up in the morning, take a shower to re rejuvenate so that it starts your day better, that in itself, it's a very simple definition of wellness. Uh, you know, when you look, you look into the mirror and, and it lights up right, um, um, you know, and, and, and you feel good about yourself. That in itself, you know, it's a very fundamental uh, 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 basis for wellness. And then beyond that, you know, you, you, you know, bathtubs, you know, multisensorial, you know, and all that aspects, you know, we look into it where you have the options to choose, to select, depending on what you need. Uh, then that's where it gets to luxury because I think part of luxury too is, you know, how, how, how are you enabled to ex customize the experience to what you want? Right, and I think that's important and aspects that we look into as well. Paul, is, is that something um, you agree with? Is that something that that um, clients are expecting, customers are expecting more more often? That kind of bespoke, um, personal kind of service when they're when they're staying in one of your your properties. Well, I think I think the very nature of luxury is pretty fluid, and it's something that we all think we have an idea of what luxury is. And, you know, it could be an aesthetic, but, you know, we've all had that time, let's say when your car breaks down and you're in the rain and you just want to go home and you'll do anything for a cup of tea and, and a blanket or something like that. Like it, your, your luxury changes. I've been through China and all I've wanted to do is just have a, a clean, clean, dry bedroom. It, it doesn't matter where, you know, like I'm not looking for, you know, butler service, right? So we have to understand that our expectations of luxury change um, wherever we are and that those, those expectations of luxury, we need to um, reverse the understanding that luxury is similar everywhere. So when we approach projects, we just don't look at project and say, right, we're going to apply the same amount of luxury or this or this or that, or we're going to do this or that. It's about looking at where we are going into, looking at the market, looking at what the needs are and thinking about what the guests will expect and then bringing it above that. And so, and that changes. So we, it's, it's, it is about guest expectations, but you know, I mean, coming out of COVID, a luxury for me was finally going home and spending some time with my mother and father after three years. That was luxury. Right. So, it, it, you know, not having to have Zoom calls all the time and having meetings, that's a luxury to me. And so our ideas of what luxury, I think, are what our perceptions of luxury are, have certainly changed over the last few years, being isolated as we were. And, you know, seeing Christina for the first time in a few years, I mean, it would be so much 
much, it'd be such a luxury for me just to sit down with her and have a cup of coffee and catch up as old friends. Yes. I mean, I'm the old one. She's the young one. But the, the idea is that we need to understand when we, when we think about luxuries, it's not a static animal. And that, yes, there's this idea of customization, but there's also this idea of togetherness now that we're looking at in luxury. Whereas before COVID, we were looking at a lot of ideas of isolation, individual, private villas, individual, this, private, private, private. Now I see these trends where it's all about reuniting. It's about traveling with family, traveling with friends, and that that's a different type of luxury. Right. Sometimes you used to want to get away from your family and friends who see you travel. And now we're now we're traveling together. So we have to look at these things and, and understand that that luxury is always going to be something that's very fluid. Mm. And that that um, reminds me of a question that I, I was going to ask on Chick as well, which is um, when we're thinking of like the passing of time and changing trends. And we, we talked about the hospitality industry being quite a, a fast, fast industry, but I think what's faster is probably the technology. I mean, technology is changes so, so quickly and um, things um, kind of quite feel outdated quite, quite quickly, um, whether it's like user interfaces or um, just um, the functionality itself. When you're designing technology into to products, how, how kind of far ahead are you thinking? How are you kind of trying to ensure the kind of the, um, the longevity of, of that design so that you don't have something that oh looks cool today, but two years later starts to feel you know a little bit clunky, a little bit um, um, dated. Because I think just the, the pace at which um, our kind of expectations around technology have changed so much faster than they would you know a, a traditional faucet or a, a toilet or, or something like that. Yeah, I, 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 and that's a tough one. Uh, technology does change us very very quickly, and 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 we, you know, and and I'm very mindful of that, right? Um, you know every three years, you know, technology changes, right? So, so which is why I think, you know, simplicity is key. And then, and fortunately in our industry, we don't have to be ahead of the game. Again, you know, we can, we can look at, you know, how customers are adapting to technology and how customers get to a point where they are comfortable with, with technology. Uh, and then, you know, then, then we apply it, right? And, and, and I think a lot of that is not just the technology, it's, I mean, technology is what you see behind the product, but it's really, you know, the, the, the user interface, the way you, you interact with, with, with the product, right? So if, you know, so, so keeping things simple is key, right? But there's opportunity too with, you know, over the air updates, right? If, if things are connected to the internet, for example, you know, we can make over the air updates, you know, with our intelligent toilet, for example, the new me two is one, one example that we can do that, you know, and, and, and as, and, and so we, we want to be able to use technology to enable that upgrade, to enable that, that change, uh, that improvement when, whenever we can, right? So it's, I mean, the, the best example is, you know, the, the, the mobile phones that we use every day, right? So it's, it's updating and improving upon itself, uh, 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 you know, every other month actually right without you knowing it so it updates you know at night when you're not using it and and you know next morning you don't realize it but it's actually improving upon itself yes there's debugging and all that kind kind of stuff going on um but but it it, it, it you know it, it uses you know user data to 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 improve upon the user experience so that's an op there's an opportunity there, there for us to to do that so that we prolong the life of the product um but, but again, I think fundamentally is, you know, to, to use technology uh, 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 smartly and uh, simplify. Oh, and, and from an from a engineering perspective, I would say, you know, we, 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 we will look at opportunities to, you know, make sure that we, we are smart about the internals where we could put in the right modules where you can sort in, sort out, you know, to, 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 to make necessary upgrades, you know, without changing the entire product whenever we can. Um, so, you know, there are opportunities where, you, you know, we look at prolonging life, you know, of, of technology, right? So, yeah. That kind of leads on to my, my last question. We're kind of running out of time. I'll, I'll ask it to you uh, um, first, but what do you think are the opportunities? And by the way, Paul and Christina will be coming to you after this. So if you want to have a bit of time to think, what do you think are the opportunities um, looking to the future for, for technology? Where are there any areas of, of design, whether that be kind of luxury hospitality or wellness that you think there's an opportunity that we're not exploring yet, or maybe somewhere where the technology is not quite there yet, but in, in future, we can, you can see it getting there. Um, I'll be very interested what 
products Cola are working on next? Obviously, I'm sure you can't say, but, but what, what your, what's your thinking? Where, where, where do you think um, the opportunities are going forward, looking to the next five, 10 years, say? Well, I, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, that, that bespoke experience that you, you, you mentioned, right? And I think, you know, if we can make products uh, uh, in, uh, to, today that, you know, you could somehow customize to your needs, you know, without, you know, I mean, today, when you think about that, you know, I think w- when we speak to people about uh, ideas like that, you know, they worry about, oh, yeah, I have to go adjust, twist, and, and, and you know, it's like a, a program, you know, do I have to do coding and, and, and stuff like that? Is, is it a really complicated process? But we, you know, we, and, and, and I think we're not there yet today, but it would be great, you know, where we can get to a future where, you know, the product knows who you are, and customize it and learn from you, your behaviors and customize, you know, the, the functions and the features just right for you. I think that will be great. And then, you know, and it goes beyond the product and into the bathroom space, right? So, you know, how, you know, knowing, you know, from a safety perspective, right? Knowing who you are, knowing, you know, uh, you know the, the level of accessibility that you have around the, the bathroom, for example, and keeping it safer uh, for you. Um, I, I think that's that's really important, um, you know. And and you know, if, if we're looking at the elderly, even right, is there an opportunity where, where it knows if you are having trouble in, in in the bathroom and it calls you know your loved one for help, you know, things like that, right? So you know, if if we can automate the the, the ecosystem within the bathroom, you know, in the future. Again, without you, you know, having to deal with all the knobs and buttons and 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 all the complications of technology, that would be great. Great, thank you, Christina. Over to you. Yeah, I mean, if I sort of take a look at it, digital innovation, I think there's an area in artwork. You know, this would be an area that I see that could really change. Um, uh, you know, the thought of how we specify art, and if there could be some sort of interaction with art or sculpture or something, I think this could be kind of an interesting way forward. Um, I particularly like that, you know, recently we worked on some art projects. We have our own in-house art consultancy, particularly because I love art myself. You know, we worked with infinity mirrors and what that can do and how that can make you look and feel and, and so forth with color. So I think this is another area that, you know, I think future of technology could actually be part of. Um, you know, it's not yeah. the typical stereotype painting. So for me, that's um, that's a sort of a, an area of development. And the other area I'd really like to see some sort of digital innovation is with acoustics. You know, uh, I think this is one area, I know it sounds kind of super boring, but uh, it's so important in hotels and having privacy. And I don't think there's enough of that, you know, and I guess bathrooms as well. I think that's a really big area where we can sort of keep sound, you know, uh, sound to a minimum. So I kind of like the idea of bringing in music into the bathroom because it can camouflage all the sounds, you know, I think that's kind of important. So... Yeah, I think these are areas of development. Um, I would like to see that uh, sort of take another step and maybe there's something there that, uh, you know, and it's not for every brand, of course, um, there's different different brands that could take on sort of things like that. But uh, yeah, so maybe some art and uh, sort of acoustics, these are sort of things that I'd like to see some sort of different technologies, um, you know, taking place in those uh, parts. Great. I, I like the scope of your answer from kind of high art on one end and, and hiding the sound you might make on the toilet on the other. That's good. Um, great. Uh, and, and Paul, then uh, finally over to you. Well, you. You asked for an unexpected use of technology. And I think one of the things that we're looking at right now, all of us, is the, the change in the marketplace. You know, where, where is there, we're all, the, you know, where are the jobs? You know, we have, there's so many jobs available, but the talent seems to have went missing. And, and I think that an unexpected use of technology um, moving forward in luxury is actually looking at um, really engaging more with, with our colleagues that are actually working within the, within the properties and using technology to improve their wellness and improve their lives to a lot, much greater degree. And this is across hospitality. This is, I'm, not, I'm not talking about my brand, obviously, but what I mean by that is, is attracting the best talent is, is being able to give them those types of environments. And I think that when you, when you, when you put sunshine on, 
on your staff, they're able to bring that sunshine out to the guests. And so it's looking at the way that technology can be used. I mean, we're focusing a lot on the guest experience, but I think that that part within hospitality where the back of house, the staff and the people that are going to be interfacing with, with our guests, I think looking at their well-being and looking at their wellness and using technology means of technology to be able to identify you know, gaps and improve people's lives so that that translates into their overall life and when they go home and when they're at when they're at work, I think is a space where could be an unexpected use of technology. And that was that was one of your questions. So I think coming out of the bathrooms and coming away from art, because I like those two, I think that that's something where we could, um, where I think there will be a lot of innovation moving forward. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we're about uh, out of time. Um, so um, I'll wrap this conversation up. Um, thank you so much um, to our panelists, uh, to Paul, to Christina, and to uh, Longique. Um, thank you for all your um, contributions. Um, and uh, thank you.